Hi guys, uh, welcome back to my channel. In this episode, I'm gonna be dropping my Laster lights. In this episode, I'm gonna be taking a photograph of my dog, George. Now, I did this some time ago, um, but unfortunately, George lost one of his eyes. He had uh, an ulcerated eye. We took him to the vets. We tried to get it treated, etc., etc. and unfortunately, he had to have his eye removed. And his other eye is not too great. It hasn't been since birth, since he was a pup. So he's partially blind. Today, I thought I'd get a new photograph of him because the last one I did, it's on the wall, and although I do like it, it was a bit contrasty and a bit too sharp for my liking. So this time, I thought I'd plan it, uh, plan more of what I wanted to do and how I wanted it to look and uh, you know, try and get it right in camera so it'd make it a little bit easier for me in the dark room. So I wrote down a little list of what I wanted and um, it was quite a good way of doing it for, for, the, for the dog's portrait. So I wrote number one, what do I want, i.e. composition wise. Um, number two is what lighting do I want. Number three is what background do I want. Number four was what format do I want, six by six, 35 mil, um, six by four or whatever. And uh, also what size the final print needs to be. And also what look, i.e. the contrast and sharpness. So I've already discussed that one. So once I wrote those down, I then started to write what I wanted from each, each one. And I decided that I wanted to go for um, a belly to head shot face on, so he's looking straight at me, um, which will really show that he's got one eye. That's the sort of photograph that I want. Number two is what sort of lighting. I want to get even lighting, so I've decided to use these two LED panels that I use for my videos. Uh, on this portrait. I don't usually often use them for photography. I've got strobes, etc., uh, for portraits, but in, for this dog portrait, I'm just gonna use these LED panels, uh, which is gonna prove to be a little bit tricky because um, they're, you know, they're not that bright, so I'm gonna have to be coming down on my shutter speeds a little bit, and, and possibly the aperture as well, to try and get bags of light into the camera. The background, I decided to have a classic white background, and I'm shooting this up in my daughter's hobby room. So behind me is this light blue wall. So I thought I'd shoot against this wall. If I light this wall, I should be able to get a nice light colored background um, that will complement George. So uh, that's the background I've chose. And I've decided to go for a portrait format, not landscape or square. That's the, that's the format I'm going for. And I don't know, I'll see in the dark room how I want to enlarge it and uh, what, sort of, what sort of size I want to do, a 10 by eight or 11 by nine or whatever, or a five by seven. Um, we'll soon see when I get in the dark room, but um, at least I know that I'm going to be having the camera in, in a portrait mode. And finally, what look? So I know that I want to go for a low contrast look. Um, I don't really want it uh, high contrast, and I just want to look, get a flat look so I can get a lot of bags of detail on George. And I don't want it as sharp as well. I'm going to try and keep away from the sharpness too much. So this is the opposite side now from where the video camera is. I think they're still rolling, you can see me. Um, but I've got these two LED panels. Let's bring them over, show you these. So I've got these two newer LED panels that I'm going to be using, and I've got them on full power. So um, I'll put a link in the description to these panels so you guys can see if I take this away. If I turn the power off, you might see it better. Yeah, so just two of these LED panels, one that side and one this side. They're going to be a bit too harsh, so I've just decided to put these softeners over them. Okay, these are just reflectors without the reflective surface, so they're just see-through diffusers. And I'm just balancing them here, Whoop. which proves a bit tricky, but George is only light, so when he gets on the desk, they shouldn't move. So I've put one either side just to soften it a little bit, and I've got the Olympus OM20 that I'm going to be shooting on um, with this cheap little Velbon tripod. This is only about 40 quid in the shop, a Velbon EF61 it's called. Uh, it does me for these little tiny light jobs. Uh, this camera's only light, so it should be no problem. So yeah, Olympus OM20, and inside I've got a roll of HP5. And this is the desk that I'm using. I've put George's, this is an old dressing gown of, uh, that George sleeps on, and so it's just gonna make him feel a bit comfortable when, he, when he's sitting on this. And also it's white, so it's gonna reflect, um, it's gonna bounce a little tiny bit of light maybe up. It's better than any dark color anyway. And for the wall, I've got this other little tiny LED panel here to light up the wall. And I'll show you that on the other camera, it should come out. You can see it there. And it should be okay, we'll soon see. So uh, yeah, LED panel there, LED panel, LED panel, two diffusers and a camera. 
So I've got these two teddy bears and I used these for the metering before I get George up here. Um, I just wanted to do some metering, make sure that my camera settings were gonna be um, on, on, on point with what I wanted to do. So this teddy bear's got a bit of white in it and this one's dark, where George's got a white belly and a dark face. So um, I kind of put them together, did some metering and came up with the exposure values that I needed in the camera to do the shoot. And for the metering, I used uh, a DSLR and also my phone app as well, a light meter on my, on my um, phone. So I'll put that link to that app in the description. It's pretty accurate and I use it quite a lot. So to pull out a low contrast, um, possibly I should be using a T-grain film, but I'm not, I'm using HP 5400. So uh, George is pretty good. I reckon I can nail the look that I want within a few shots. Um, and I've got 36 on that roll. So what I'm gonna do is split the roll into three sections like I did my last video when I was testing um, pulling and pushing across. So with this HP5, I'm gonna split it into three sections. So this first 12 shots, I'm gonna pull the HP5 to 200. That should pull some contrast down for me. Uh, the next 12 frames, I'm gonna shoot at 400 and develop normally. And the last 12 frames, I'm gonna shoot at 400 and stand develop in Rodnell. And stand development should pull a little bit of contrast down as well. So there's a, um, three sections and three different development types that I'm gonna, I'm gonna try. And uh, I don't know, we'll see what happens. So all we need now is George and an assistant, which is gonna be my daughter, Jess. And put him on the table there, babe. George, be a good boy. Right, so Jess, you okay? Yeah. You're gonna help me with George? Let me turn these lights on. So I just wanna just make him comfortable for a moment and then I need to get a focus on him and then we can shoot. That's fine actually, I want him, I just want his head and his chest looking straight at me so I can get his eye. So I'll go for the first 12 frames. Am I in there? No, not in the photograph, I'm gonna get you out in a minute. I just need to focus on him, just keep him comfortable. George, yeah. he's a good boy. Yeah, you are, I was perfect. I need to focus right on his eye. That's it, George. George. Okay. George. Hey. Hello, mate. That's where I need it. There. Okay, so I need you out of the way now, Jess. I'll turn the back light on and we can shoot. There you go, good boy. One shot. Do this quick, George. Two shots. Ooh. Hey, good boy. Right. George. What's this? No, turn your head a little bit. That way. <laughs> That's it. Good boy. One, two. I mean, I need to get the next frames in. Okay. George. 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 Okay. Oh, that done it, Jess. Well done. I've got to take him out now. <laughs> You're picking. Okay. Good boy. Well done, mate. I oh, know. Hey, good boy. So I've just taken the whole roll of film on George, like I said, 12, um, I'm looking at that camera, it's that one. Uh, 12 pulled, 12 are gonna be developed normally, and the other 12 are gonna stand develop. So uh, let's get on with the developing and see what the legs look like. Good boy. Come on. So once I've taken the photographs, it was then time to get the film out of the camera and get them into three separate developing, tank, developing tanks for, for the uh, development process that I was wanted to use. So I'll just quickly show you what I did there because some of you guys have asked me how to take three strips out of one can and put them into separate tanks. So uh, I'll just show you how I do that. So when I cut my film into three strips uh, for three different developing tanks, it just saves me shooting three different films. So I can take the same roll of film and cut it into three sections, which means I've got 12 frames on each section or roundabout sort of way. So um, I took an old roll of film and I measured this. This is roughly 12 frames, if you can see that. This is roughly 12 frames on there. So this is kind of like a measuring tape in the dark room. This is done obviously all in pitch black darkness. So then I get my roll of film, I get it out of the can. And uh, when I rewind the film back, um, just before, as I'm, as I'm winding the film back out of the camera, just before it gets to this part, you can hear it click where it comes off the spool. That's when I stop it, take the um, film out, and uh, I've got this little bit to play with. Generally what I do is just put it over, cut a little tiny bit, which would be the leader. Um, and then from there, if I just push that back in, I'm going totally in the dark, get my measure, put the film on top, the uh, exposed film on top, and then just put it all the way along in the dark. And that's the end there. So I know that that I need to cut and then once I've cut it, I put it straight into the tank, which is sitting next to me. Put the tank to one side, bring the next tank over, 
and do the same again. So once I'd washed and dried the negatives, it was time to get in the dark room and find out what I'd got and see which uh, strip of negatives was the best to use for the portrait of George. Um, I found that the 200 pull on the HP5 was far better than the other two developments that I did. So I decided to concentrate on the negatives that were the 200 pulled. And after doing loads of different test strips, you can see, I'm not gonna show you them all, but um, I was doing all sorts of different test strips uh, to find the best image of George. And this is the final one that I came up with. Now, these squiggly lines are just reference for me to, to burn in the, the, um, the fur. But unfortunately, the background wasn't working for me. Um, I did put that light on, but I was just getting too much dark areas around here. And I did make one more final print. I'll just show you that now. Um, to see what it, it would look like. I tried to play around with that dark bit at the bottom, but it just wasn't cutting the mustard for me. So I decided to um, scrap <laughs> that shoot and start again. And that's what I did. I came back to the drawing board and this time I decided to take away the backlight, grin and bear it, come away from the white background and just go for a gray background or neutral background, which is behind me now. Um, that was another print I tried. This time I tried to dodge around the background. It just looked a bit weird. But um, yeah, so I decided to go for another shoot. But not only that, the, I wasn't too happy with, with the 200 pull because I was using an uh, aperture of 2.8 and my shutter speed was 1 60th of a second. Now 1 60th was okay, George was very still, I could get away with that. But the 2.8, it just wasn't sharp enough um, around George's face. So I decided to go for a faster film. This time I went for T-Max 3200. I didn't want to shoot it at 3200. I wanted to pull it um, down in three stops, 1600, 800 and 400 and see what I'd get. So that's exactly what I did. I came back up here with George. Um, I didn't film it. I just got on with the with the shoot. It was quite tricky. So I'm glad I didn't film it. He was quite restless and didn't want to, didn't want to play ball. But uh, I got the, got the photographs in the can and then went back in the dark, well, developed them, went back in the dark room and made some more prints. And this time I was pleased to say that I came out with the prints I was looking for. This was the final print of George that I ended up with, which is the one I liked. There's uh, less contrasty. And this was the T-Max at pull to 400. I did have to do a little bit of jiggery pokery in the dark room with contrast fill. It was a bit of fogging to try and get the look that I wanted. And that's pretty much where I wanted to go. I was quite happy with the end result. Um, you know, you can see these ones here are still quite contrasty. And I just wasn't getting the results that I wanted. And again here, this is the uh, more contrasty print. These were, I was trying to keep away from them. Um, but I went through quite uh, a long session in the dark room to try and get the print that I wanted. But uh, I'll show you the print that I made of George, the final print, um, actually being made in the dark room. I've come in the dark room, you can see I've got loads of test prints around me and I still couldn't try and uh, pull that contrast down. I found that the 3200 T-Max was, um, even though I pulled it to 400, was still pumping out the contrast that I didn't want. Um, and I was trying to control it with contrast filters. And you know, in an ideal world, it'd be great to just take a negative straight out of the camera, put it on the enlarger and, and project onto paper, job done. But it's just not gonna be like that for this particular print. So I'm gonna have to use some contrast filters and a little bit of jiggery pokery to try and get the final print that I want. And I've already done that. I've already made the print. I'm quite happy with what I've done. So uh, I'll tell you what I've done and then I'll show you, I'm gonna make a reprint and show you um, how I did it. So. Basically, it was too contrasty, so I went for a contrast zero filter and I did some test strips and I put the contrast zero filter on for three seconds and then I used uh, the contrast zero filter, sorry, for three seconds and then um, I used contrast three filter as well just to try and bring the blacks out a little tiny bit on George. So I kind of did split grade filtering with the contrast zero and the contrast three at three seconds, but it was still too contrasty. So I decided to fog the paper and give it a little tiny burst of white light onto the paper, uh, literally for a split second at F16 on the enlarger. Then I pulled the times down on the enlarger by a second. So instead of three seconds, I was just doing two seconds. So I did split grade filtering, um, filter zero for two seconds and a filter three for two seconds. A little tiny bit of dodging on his face and I managed to come out with a print that I was looking for. So um, I'll just show you that now, what I was doing. Uh, I'm going to turn all the lights off, put the red lights on and show you me making this second print. All right, so I've got my filters ready, got my dodge tool ready, negative sitting there. Fog the paper first. Now this might not be the way some guys do it, but you know, I've been playing around in here for a <laughs> few hours on this print now. And this is the final 
print that I was happy with. So as long as I'm happy with it, you guys can go off and experiment yourself and do your thing. But this was what I did to get this print. Cover my paper up. Okay, so the paper's inside there now. Uh, these clamps, just angled metal angle clamps uh, or weights. I'll just put them on there to hold the template down. Um, so F16 on the enlarger. So I'm just going to fog that paper for a split second. Here we go. Boom, boom. That's it. That's fogged. Put my negative carrier in. I'll just give it a quick blast actually with my rocket blower because I may have collected dust as it was sitting there. In she goes. Bring my aperture back to the normal setting of, I think it was 5.6, yeah, 5.6. And start off with my filters. So start off with the grade zero filter. Uh, just two seconds with this. Oh, and that's not gonna hit the blacks, it's just gonna work on the, on the highlights. And she goes two seconds there. One, two, and then put the grade three filter in. I tried grade fours from fives, they were just too harsh. So grade three was about the best that I found. And I need to use my dodge tool just to dodge Georgie's face for a second during this two seconds or just half a second. Let's see if I can get this right. Okay. Next piece I needed to do was just his belly. I just need to burn using a burn hole uh, card onto his belly because that was a little bit um, too bright on the final print. So I'm just going to literally do that now for a second. So I've just turned the enlarger on and I'm just going to bring the hole over in a second. Here we go. One, two, that's enough. And the last thing I need to do is just make my border. Um, so I'll take my negative out. Take the filter out. And I've got this card here that covers the whole print area apart from anywhere that I put it. So I'm just going to make a very thin border. And just burst white light onto it. Like so. And the same this side. And the same at the bottom. It's starting to get tricky to see because of the red lights are casting shadows, but it should be about right. And finally this side. And that's it. I should create my border. Now let's uh, put this paper inside the developer. See what happens. And it goes, and uh, this is Ilford Multigrade Developer, and it's all fresh. So that was quite a learning curve for me. I didn't really anticipate spending that much time in a dark room over one print, but you know what? I'll be able to look at that and know what I went through in the dark room to get that final print. So there's always gonna be a, a, a sort of, uh, you know, every time I look at it, I remember that uh, time I was in the dark room spending ages uh, trying to try to pull down the contrast on George. But between the HP5, that just wasn't uh, fast enough for me. I had to use 2.8 in the end, because uh, I was pulling it to 200. Um, 
and the T Max seemed to work really well for for what I was after. You know, this wasn't a, a video about reviews on T Max or, or or HP5 or any other film for that matter. It's just a case that I had 3200 there. I thought, right, I'll give that a go and see what happens if I pull it from 16 to 800 to 400. See what the negatives look like and uh, hopefully get a print. And I did. So uh, anyway, guys, I hope you liked the video. A little bit of darkroom work, a little bit of playing around with with different film speeds, with two different films. Uh, any comments, leave them below. And as always, thanks very much for the subscribers, the likes, the dislikes, all the comments you give me, and uh, all my Patreons as well. Really appreciate your support on my channel. Cheers, guys. George. George. <laughs> Come on. <laughs>